machine. Okay? Are they going to try to fix it? Francis Ford Coppola. So will they work on it? I'll just talk to you a little bit about whatever, and then maybe we'll try again. Uh, I thought I thought I'd tell you a little bit about how I came to work on Dracula, and to do that, I'll tell you a story that walking through the convention made me think of. When I was 19, I was the drama counselor of a summer camp, and I had nine little boys in the summer camp. The reason I think of this story is because they were trading baseball cards all the time. They had these baseball cards and they used to trade them everything with these baseball cards and they were getting dog-eared. So I said to them, kids, give me the baseball cards and I'll put them in a box and I'll write a certificate for every baseball card on a piece of paper and then I'll have the real baseball cards in the box and you can trade the paper back and forth and so they won't get dog-eared and they'll be valuable someday. So I took all the baseball cards certificates and they did it. And meanwhile, you know, I wanted them to go to bed or I wanted them to, to sweep the floor or do their bunk. So I would, I kept writing more, more baseball cards than I really had. <laughs> so I thought that you're two Yogi Berries or what have you. And the kids were good. And then I realized that it was total inflation, that I didn't have enough certificates in the box. So I locked the box and I said, from now on, you could not redeem them anymore. And I realized this is exactly what's happened with the economy, you know. <laughs> So I would read to them at night, and the, and the book I read them was Dracula. <laughs> so, and I would read Dracula, and they would listen to it and be scared and go to sleep. And it was because I had read the real Dracula book, the Dram, uh, Bram Stoker uh, Dracula book. Uh, by the way, if you get this fixed, I'll shut up if we're going to show this. Okay, so someone signaled to me. It's ready? Yeah. Story are like twin heads of the coin, that there's 
Dracula, a lot of the side of Dracula is Van Helsing. And so I was encouraging him, he happens to be just more mad and use his instincts, and of course he's pretty mad, so. Known most recently to audiences for his Academy Award winning portrayal of Hannibal Lecter in Silence of the Lambs, Anthony Hopkins finds himself this time on the opposite side of a very different duel between good and evil. Incorporating the legend of the vicious Bad Dracul, the impaler, who was one of the inspirations for Stoker's Dracula, this new Dracula offers a solution to one timeless mystery. I've always been asked, how did Dracula become a vampire? I went back and I found an incident in 1462 when 30,000 Turks had invaded Wallachia or Transylvania. And I took this moment and said, okay, this is when this great prince who's lost the only woman he's ever loved in his life sank. This great prince announced the church, renounced Christ, and made his pact with the devil and swore to come back, to beat death, and come back and avenge her loss. The church that he had protected and killed for couldn't protect the one that he loved. Winona Ryder also plays a second role, the martyr Elizabeth, Dracula's ancient love. Set with barrels of blood as blood of the Rocky leaves its terrible. 